Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it is good to be back. As you can see, gone is the window purely taking up the entire background of my videos. I've got a new desk, a new setup in the back, and as you can see, it's barren. I don't know what to put back here. Perhaps maybe some AI art made by you guys? I don't know. I'm gonna need your help, though, so leave suggestions down in the comments. That being said, we have some stuff I want to talk about today. First up, we have another record for the best open source model ever made top of the hugging face LLM leaderboards. This is smug or smug 72B. The first model ever with an average score of 80. I know to some of you that might not mean anything, but the big deal here is that it is the world's best open source foundation model. That is huge. This is massive. I know these models keep one-upping each other. It feels like every few weeks we have the world's best open large language model. The reason I get so excited every time I see something like this is because it is my belief that open source absolutely is the future of our species if we want it to be successful in regards to AI. AI is such a powerful technology that it has to be open and free for anyone to access. If we let just the most powerful people lock that tech down, the rest of us won't ever be able to experience its true benefits. Now sure, open source AI has its own quarrels and dangers of its own, but my belief is that the genie is out of the bottle, the cat is out of the bag. AI technology is powerful and it is dangerous, and under no circumstances should any small group of people ever control it. That's just my opinion, you might have your own opinion and that is completely fine. However, it is absolutely undeniable that open source is a steam train that cannot be stopped. 2024 will absolutely be the year of the open source large language model. So how they were actually able to be the world's best open source foundation model is actually because Smug72B here applied several different techniques on a fine tune that was originally derived from Quen72B. I love to hear this, they are going to publish all of these techniques that allowed them to accomplish this in a research paper and apply them to some of the best Mistral models. So this thing beats Mistral Medium, it's not even fine tuned from the previous best base model. So they actually want to apply these new found techniques to the best Mistral models. They say the techniques they used specifically target reasoning and math skills. In the meantime, feel free to download this little sucker and give it a shot. I love the enthusiasm. We will continue to innovate in this space, pushing towards open source AGI. Here's another pretty insane comparison. As you can see, we've got a few different models. GPT 3.5, Gemini Pro, Mistral Small, Mistral Medium, and Smug. Smug beating all of those models, so this thing is absolutely better than GPT 3.5. 3.5 and Gemini Pro, and this reigns true for every single one of these benchmarks. But as you can see, Gemini Pro was particularly difficult because a lot of these just are unknown. Again, we can't really properly benchmark a lot of these closed source models such as GPT 3.5, GPT 4, Gemini, etc. In this year, 2024, we will see the release of an open source large language model that is better than GPT 4. And when GPT 4 essentially becomes free because it's now an open source model developed by someone other than OpenAI, well, there's no choice for OpenAI but to release a better model, GPT-5. And of course, hopefully, GPT-4 will slide down to the free version of ChatGPT and become more accessible for everyone. That's the great part about competition with open source. It forces the closed source companies to actually create products that benefit the world as a whole. This is the reason I promote open source. I think it's the future of AI tech. Now, I'm not saying that OpenAI or even Google necessarily are bad people and that they don't want what's best for humanity. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just all about preventative maintenance. Anyways, let's move right on. Guys, this right here is absolutely ridiculous. This is the future of visual effects. As you can see from the title, anything in any scene, photorealistic video object insertion. This means that we can take a video clip that's already been recorded, input any object we want, and you won't be able to tell that it was actually added in. I mean, look at both of these videos here. If it wasn't highlighted and pointed out to you, you would have no idea that that streetlight, for example, was inserted in right there, or you'd have no idea that that little radio or whatever 
whatever it is, has been inserted into the scene. To give you guys a very basic rundown of how they're achieving this insanely realistic object insertion with AI, they're using four different modules here. First, they have one that provides scene and objects, essentially a knowledge bank of things you can choose to add to your videos. Then they have an object placement and stabilization module, obviously so you can put the object in the scene and then it tracks with the movement of the camera. Then they have lighting estimation and shadow generation, which will take your image, create realistic lighting and shadows for the inserted objects, which works really, really well. As you can see, they all blend in quite nicely. A lot of them look like they were just there initially. And then this is the coolest part. Finally, they have a photorealistic transfer module that adjusts the final look of the video to ensure that it matches the quality of the real life footage that you captured. This corrects issues like noise, color accuracy, sharpness, making the object look like it really was in the scene captured on the specific camera it was captured on. Now I'm coming back around to the main theme seemingly of today's video, open source. The source code's freely available for you to download and mess with. So this can be installed and used today as long as you know how to install it. This is going to transform video effects. Think about it guys, what is the difference between a big budget movie necessarily and something that you can produce at your house? Well sure, camera equipment is one of them, and filming scenes and all of that, but hey, AI video is long on its way, and is also something we're going to be talking about later in today's video, but VFX is also a huge part of a lot of motion pictures. The average person cannot create insanely complex VFX without a decent computer, a ton of knowledge, and the right software. This allows you to do it with almost no practice at all. This is democratizing creativity, allowing people with creative ideas to bring them to life in easier ways. It's something I'm all for, and sure, there's obviously the risk of VFX people losing jobs because of tech like this, and I understand that that is a huge issue. It's something that definitely needs to be compensated for in some way in our society. However, I don't want to lose focus of the main goal here, democratization of creativity. AI will bring us hopefully to a point where the most popular popular creative ideas simply belong to those who can come up with them. No longer will creative people necessarily be bound by monetary limits or even skill limits. It's a unique perspective, I know, but I for one don't think that creative ideas should be limited. In other news, we have something coming from Alpha Signal AI on Twitter. Big news, the most powerful GPT competitor, Gemini Ultra, will be released on Wednesday, correction, actually Thursday now. Now, and Google has confirmed it, so that's just a few days away. I can already hear you typing on your keyboards down in the comments, hold up, but I thought that that whole Gemini demo was faked. I thought that Google was lying to us. Well, here's the rub. Yes, Google did in fact do a naughty. They had a demo of Gemini's image recognition capabilities, where objects would be held up to the screen and Gemini would appear to recognize them in real time and just have a conversation with the user. It was really surreal. It turned out that that whole demo wasn't actually in real time and it was kind of all pre-planned. So how could we ever trust Google? Now I'm not saying that I know for sure, but word on the street is that this model does put up a fight against GPT-4. Not GPT-4 Turbo, the original GPT-4. Obviously I'll be making a video that comprehensively explores this model when it releases, but according to Google, Ultra beats GPT-4 in 7 out of 8 benchmarks if you remember from their original release. In other news, News stable video diffusion weights have been dropped, of course, by Stability AI, which is the gunslinger of the wild, wild west open source AI world. Their models have known to be very good, and of course, they're fully open source, meaning anyone can build off of them. They really, really push AI technology in a forward direction as a company. Stable video diffusion was announced quite some time ago, but finally the weights are released, and yes, I do have access to their stable video diffusion demo on a website. Planning on making a video on that shortly, but the weights are out on Hugging Face if you'd like to download them. The reason that this is so exciting to me is because it's like deja vu. In case you've forgotten, let me take you back. Image generation kicked off with the release of Dolly 2 that was very limited in access and of course it's a closed source model that people had to pay for. Midjourney then followed swiftly behind Dolly, but was nowhere near as good as it initially. 
Then bang, out of nowhere, Stability AI releases Stable Diffusion. This AI model not only handily beat Dolly 2 in many scenarios, but elevated the rest of everyone's AI image game, including Midjourney's and probably, honestly, Dolly's as well. This open source software was distributed millions of times, it can be found on thousands of websites, and quickly accelerated the AI image generation space to where it is today. And this is like deja vu with Stable Video diffusion. We have a open source video generation model that competes with the best video generation models we've seen to date, and of course, anyone can access it, anyone can use it, it can be put on any website, which is just going to drive the competition further and really accelerate the development of AI generation in video. By the end of this year, video generation is going to look different than it does right now, mark my words. Now sure, yes, if we look at AI video generation from the point of view of a problem that needs to be solved technologically, it's a lot more complex. So I think that video generation is going to take a lot more time to develop fully than AI photo generation, but this is the beginning folks, this is where the explosion happens with the insane competition that open source good AI video generation is going to bring. Now, I hate to bring the elevated mood down a little bit, but I'm sure you guys might have heard of this insane story. This was all over Twitter, but specifically I'm giving credit here to Sent Dex Harrison Kinsley on Twitter. Read the headline, folks. Finance worker pays out $25 million after a deepfaked video call with a chief financial officer of some company. As Harrison points out, apparently it was a group video call with everyone else deepfaked with audio except for the target. So everyone in this group video call was deepfaked except for obviously the person who is getting scammed. Kinsley also points out that this attack vector seems nearly scalable in an automated way at this point too, of course, with large language models and voice generation that is in near real time. And trust me, I trust Mr. Kinsley here. His YouTube channel is fantastic. Very knowledgeable about artificial intelligence. Now, what is my opinion on this? Well, as I said earlier in the video, with AI in regards to its power, the cat is out of the bag. It's not going away. We need to deal with this as a society, as a species. First things first, we need to accept that we are not prepared for this and probably never will be. It is going to be tough. Situations like this will happen, and yes, it is sad and horrible. The issue has always been with great power comes great responsibility, and there is a great possibility for incredibly positive and incredibly negative effects. My thoughts on the best way we can combat this currently is beginning to teach AI literacy, technological literacy. We need new technological verification methods first and foremost, but people need to develop critical thinking skills in regards to technology, and in my opinion, well, the rest of the world. Critical thinking is a gift that humans have been given, and in this very scenario, we must use it. Whenever you see something online, you have to question, is this real? Is this AI generated? What are the possible implications if it is indeed AI generated? And make no mistake, we're all going to screw up in this regard. We're all going to be fooled by stuff. Best we can do is not beat ourselves up about it and move forward with life. For as much as I think this technology being developed has the potential to hurt, I really think that the long-term benefits, the long-term benefit to humanity is there. And from what I'm seeing, every researcher, every step of the way is taking precautions in the ways that they best know how. Joseph Cox on Twitter posted the underground site where neural networks churn out fake IDs. Joseph Cox actually tested this for himself, made two fake IDs in minutes, and even used one to successfully bypass the identity verification check on a cryptocurrency exchange site. Obviously, as Joseph points out, this has massive implications for crime and cybersecurity. Our criminal agencies, our criminal structures need to be very aware of the implications of this technology and how they work. Again, technological literacy. So one of the goals of my channel is to teach people about this tech and what it can actually get up to, and that's kind of why I feel a little bit obligated to talk about this today. While it might not be fun to talk about this stuff, it's definitely still very important, and we have to think about it. If it's something you care about, maybe you'd even want to make some of your family members aware that this is a possibility. Fake people that sound and look real, fake identities. AI has this capability to blur the 
the line between reality and computer-generated reality. The more I look at this stuff, the more I feel that general society is just not ready for this level of trickery and fakery. This is really where we have to come to that personal decision of, do we believe humanity is naturally good? Like I said, the cat is out of the bag. It is apparent that the abusive use of AI to conduct fraudulent activity is an evolving and industry-wide challenge. No doubt this makes us feel hopeless at times, but I believe in humanity's ability to find the light. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this stuff. I know I was a little bit more opinionated than normal in today's video, but what's the point of the channel if not to spread my beliefs in bounce them off of you guys to hopefully grow. Learning more about humanity's future absolutely excites me. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Again, let me know what to put in the background. It just looks so barren and empty. See you in the next one. Goodbye.